So let me, let me deal with uh, two main objections. There's many, but there's two main objections that I'd like to deal with here this morning that will come against the pro-life perspective. Despite everything that I just laid out, people will say, my body, my choice. A woman should have the right to choose. How do you respond to that? Let me, let me give you a little help with that. You need to ask them a question. Choose what? They need to finish that sentence. It would be like me saying, I think a woman should be able to take. Like, are you going to finish that? Take what? Take a life? Is that what you're saying? Choose. Choose what? Choose death for your child? Is that what you mean? What are you saying exactly? You can't just say women should have the right to choose. Choose what? See, I believe, again, women should be able to make all kinds of choices. They should. They should be able to choose their own health care provider, their own school, husband, career. I'm pro-choice on all of those and a whole lot more. Live in the city. Live in the burbs. You choose. Drive a car. Drive a truck. You choose. Get married. Stay single. You choose. Public school. Private school. Republican. Democrat. Walmart. Target. McDonald's, Burger King, Pepsi, Coke, Soup, Salad, Ranch, Thousand Island. You choose all of those. I'm not against you choosing those. I'm rigorously pro-choice in my belief that women should have the right to choose. However, when it comes to taking the life of an innocent, distinct, living, whole human being in your tummy that is not part of your body, You don't get to choose to end that life. That's where the line is drawn. See, contrary to popular opinion, you can't do whatever you want with your body. I can't do whatever I want with my body. Back in college, I had a run-in with the law for public urination. I didn't hurt anybody. No one even saw me. Not even the officer. But he suspected that I did it because... There was some evidence left behind. I won't go into that. You draw the lines there. But he gave me a very firm warning. I didn't say, whoa, hey, what's up with the warning? I can do whatever I want with my body. Not according to that officer. You you can't use your body to shoot heroin or smoke crack. The government tells all of us, men and women, that's illegal. Wait a minute, I want to shoot deadly poison into my veins. I have the right to do that because it's my body. No, you don't. The government is telling us all the time what we can and cannot do with our bodies. A prostitute and the person who solicits a prostitute, they're both committing what? A crime. You say, well, that's not right. You know, I I think it, it shouldn't be that way. It's a mutual agreement. They both want sex for pay. It's the transactions that's happening, and they're both entering into it willingly. Can't they do what they want with their own bodies? No, it's illegal. The my body, my choice objection falls flat on its face. It's just not true. You know what else isn't true? Is when speaking about women's rights, they don't include all women. Often they are prejudiced against a particular group of women. You know what group this is? It's the little women in the womb. What about them? What about their rights? See, people assume that that the unborn aren't precious human beings. They're not arguing for it. They're just assuming it. And we got to be mindful of this. I I heard... um, in a book called Case for Life by, by Scott Klusendorf. I pulled a lot of this stuff from him. If you are fascinated with, with understanding the life issue and how to stand up and defend life, Scott Klusendorf is your guy, okay? He, he is brilliant. He, he, he pulled from a, a very famous work called The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. And, and you probably read this in school like I did. And I think it was chapter 32. I saw it in there. And and remember, if you remember the story, Huck is going to uh, meet up with Aunt Sally. 
but, but he's late. And so he has to explain his late arrival by boat. And he totally makes this up. He says, we blowed out a cylinder head. Aunt Sally responds, good gracious, anybody hurt? No, ma'am, says Huck. It just killed a, and he uses the N word. And Aunt Sally says, well, it's lucky because sometimes people do get hurt. What just happened there? They both assumed a black person is not one of us. Did they not? And is that not the argument on this issue? They're not one of us, therefore we can kill them. President Obama, on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade, he said this, Today, as we reflect on the 41st anniversary of the Supreme Court decision in Roe v. Wade, we re recommit ourselves to the decision's guiding principle that every woman should be able to make her own choices about her body and her health. Every woman, Mr. President? Are you including the unborn in that? He continues, because this is a country where everyone deserves the same freedom and opportunities to fulfill their dreams. Everyone, Mr. President? Are you including life in the womb? What about those women? Do they have the opportunity to fulfill their dreams? Or are they snuffed out? See, when he says everyone, he's making an assumption. He, everyone in his mind doesn't include the unborn. He didn't argue for it. He just assumed it. And this is a logical fallacy called question begging. See, and our job as pro-life Christians is to expose that assumption, bring it to recollection for them, and then bring the focus back to where it needs to be. And where is that? You guessed it. What is the unborn? <laughs>